All right, everybody, welcome to BO Boys for Thursday, August 17th. Fuck it, it's a raw feed. We're doing it live on Pat's birthday. I'm Clayton. Yeah, I'm Pat. I'm the birthday boy. Happy birthday to me. So as a birthday present, there was only one thing I wanted this year. My wife was asking, do you want to go on a trip? Do you want expensive jewelry? You know, I'm Italian. Maybe she's thinking, do I want like a bejeweled crucifix? Something like that. And of course, I would like that. <laughs> yeah. But there was only one present I really wanted this year on my birthday. And that was for David Thompson, our resident superhero senior correspondent co-host of the direct podcast editor at the direct i wanted david thompson in in a box for my birthday in a bir birthday in a birthday box and delivered to a studio to be a guest on this episode and guess what i got my birthday wish david thompson is with us thank you wow i had no idea it was your birthday happy birthday i'm so thank happy you, to be you. here not only as a guest but as your present pat yes. and uh man it's been a while but I'm excited. Like Blue Beetle, we're going to get to it. Isn't maybe going to be the biggest comic book movie box office hit, but there are a lot of storylines heading into this one, and I'm happy to be here. Well, thank you. It's, it's nice, right, to, to be surprised as a birthday present to another human being. So I'm glad <laughs> yeah. you got to experience that tonight. And yeah, I mean, listen, you said it, Blue Beetle. That is the big movie opening this weekend. There's two big movies opening this weekend that we'll get into, but... I mean, I think let's let's just go right into it. We got our superhero comic book guy here. So why wait? Blue Beetle is opening this weekend. It is the newest DCU superhero movie. Now, David, could you set the table for us? Because there's so much going on at DC. You know, there was the Snyder verse, then there was the other verses, and then there is a holding pattern until James Gunn takes over with his movies, and Gail Gadot's still hanging around, and we got a Jason Momoa uh, Aquaman movie coming out in a few months. And where is Blue Beetle in this? Is this in DCU, or is this movie about to become obsolete before it even opens? That is an excellent question because it's kind of both. At least that's how it's being framed to us in a very confusing way, in my mm -hmm. opinion. So Blue Beetle, of course, it was greenlit under the old regime, originally for HBO Max. This was never supposed to even come to theaters. Um, wow. Since the Warner Brothers Discovery merger and David Zaslav took over, he axed Batgirl, as we all well know and love. <laughs> and he decided, instead of axing Blue Beetle, he wasn't going to put it straight on to now Max. He was going to pay a little bit more, promote it a little bit more, and distribute it into theaters. So the budget's not you know super high, as I'm sure you guys know. It's not a huge, big budget um, mm -hmm. comic book movie. Still, relatively, um, it is a big budget. But it originally was never supposed to come out in theaters. So with that being said, it was a part of that old regime. We will not see a theatrical movie by the new regime at DC Studios with James Gunn and Peter Safran until July 11th, 2025 with Superman wow. Legacy. So wow. currently, um, in, in 2024, the only DC movie hitting theaters is Joker 2 in October. Um, and that is an Elseworld story, meaning it's separate from any kind of connective universe that we may know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the route they're going with that. So 2024 will be kind of a reset year if Aquaman sticks to that date in Christmas of this year. In Blue Beetle, to answer your question, these, the movie Blue Beetle is not in the new DCU. It, it's kind of supposed to be in the DCEU, quote-unquote. But okay. James Gunn has said that the character, like the guy who's playing Blue Beetle, is the first DC character that may kind of reappear in future years so it seems like there could be plans for the character himself and the actor who betrays him to return you know eventually but the film you know james gunn isn't saying hey this is a part of my overarching story plan because he has he was literally to dc and warner brothers say hey James Gunn, you, you're brilliant. You did a great job with Guardians of the Galaxy. Great job with the Suicide Squad for DC. Not mm -hmm. a box office hit, but a really, really big hit among fans. Um, and the reason it was a, wasn't a box office hit was because it released uh, straight August streaming. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. And that when WB was doing all that bullshit, 
So anyway, um, now with Blue Beetle, there is an opportunity where this movie could mean something to some people if it is good, because mm. then there would be an opportunity for the character to actually come back. Whereas, say in like Black Adam, we got Henry Cavill back in a post credit scene, and that was immediately axed, and they have now since recast Superman. So there is a possible future. The door right. is still cracked open for this character, but it's like, in my opinion, 70% probably going to be obsolete here soon. Okay. I mean, this is a, I mean, if you look at this, this actor who, I don't know if, if you've seen him in anything, but I, I'm, I'm not familiar with the actor playing Blue Beetle. His name is Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai, yeah. Okay, he's, that's I, the he's, main thing he's from. Yeah, he's he's got one of the main characters of Cobra Kai, which is a huge streaming movie great, amongst great. all ages. But for that demo that is coveted, it is a huge streaming hit. Uh, great. I mean, I, I I have seen the pilot of Cobra Kai two or three times. I've not gotten past that, but I do understand people love that show. It's a hit show. So okay, great for this actor playing blue beetle but you know movie streaming stardom is not movie stardom this actor obviously wants to take the leap to movie stardom and it's very interesting how listen james gunn is going to be watching this box office weekend because obviously blue beetle kid force itself into the james gunn dc universe if it overperforms if it legs out if it is a box office hit you know and, and the reviews have to be there because james gunn obviously likes making uh, uh, movies that get good reviews as Guardians movies are reviewed better than most superhero movies are. But yeah. the box office could really tell the story of the future of Blue Beetle the same way Black Adam's box office told the story of that character. You know, I said on the show for weeks and weeks after Black Adam opened that it was a uh, unsuccessful box office run. And even though The Rock says that it was a success and should still be a DC movie. Obviously black Adam is gone from the D DC universe because it was not a hit. So blue beetle has a chance this weekend and the next few weeks to sort of force its way into continuing. You, you don't, you don't see a lot of movies that have that kind of, I mean, obviously if a movie does well, it gets a sequel, but it's basically the character is fighting for its life at the box office this weekend. And, you know, you talked about how Zaslav, took it from being a TV movie and put it in the box office. I honestly, we all, we knew that at one point and I did forget about that in the last few weeks leading into this. Yeah. That's very interesting that that girl was a TV movie that he sent in one direction that no one will ever, ever see it. It's in the vault with the Jerry Lewis Holocaust clown movie. And you've got blue beetle opening in theaters and listen, Zaslav, there's a lot of tomatoes you could hurl at him, rightfully so, but I do love his his look at streaming movies are worthless. Either either get rid of it or put it in the movie theater. So yeah, I, I love seeing this experiment, seeing Blue Beetle basically go out into the box office wild and fight for its life. So Clayton, what what are your thoughts heading into Blue Beetle weekend? Because we we've been calling this a a, a, a an up coming impending stinker for a while but as the days now get closer i don't know i feel like some of that stink is getting scrubbed off a little bit i'm smelling less stink heading into the opening weekend of blue beetle but i feel like clayton well, you may disagree no I, I kind of agree in the sense that it's kind of hard to root against this movie because mm -hmm. it's not trying to be the next entry into a vast sort of sludgy puddle that has become the MCU, right? I mean, that's the thing. This movie has pretty modest goals, which is to do a sort of Superman, and I'm sorry, Spider-Man-esque character for the DC EU, right? Mm -hmm. It is yeah. have it is it is like a uh Hispanic Latino sort of Spider-Man situation here. And what we're seeing with that audience is that they go see a ton of movies. They do a lot of walk up business. Mm. And so my thought with this is that the tracking on this is going to be lower than the actual number 
because even though this is a superhero movie, it's not it's going to be aimed for the hardcores, but also you're going to have people who are just interested to go see a movie. It's a movie starring a lot of Hispanic Latino actors that is going to bring in that audience that oh, that over indexed Meg too, that over indexed Haunted Mansion that mm-hmm. over indexed some of these movies we thought were going to be com- com- colossal failures. And they ended up being modest kind of triumphs in a way. And so, I mean, Haunted yeah. Mansion is still kind of a bomb, but it opened to, you know, we thought it could really be bad and it did not do as bad as we thought it would. And Meg, too, we thought that was going to underperform. And then there was a lot of walk up business. This feels to me like not a normal superhero movie in the sense that got to see it, got to see the it's Easter eggs, got to see the stingers. It's like, hey, this is a guy we know. These are a lot of actors that we know. And here's a superhero that represents us. Why wouldn't we go check it out at the very least? We go to the movies all the time. So I'm feeling positive about this. Yeah, it it feels as we get closer to it, it feels like an underdog story. I would say a Mm -hmm. month, two months ago, the conversation was, oh, God, another superhero movie. I can't wait for this to tank. I want to pour more dirt on the superhero movies. And then. You sort of look at exactly what Blue Beetle was is, and yeah, it's a movie that got rescued from Streamo, and it's got a diverse cast, and it's not an interconnected universe. It's just a movie, and it starts to feel rootable. Now, does an underdog story for a movie make people want to go see a movie? I don't know, but I don't think the passion against it is here in the same way that there was a very anti- this type of movie feeling when Quantumania came out, when Shazam came out, like those movies were almost facing a backlash before they open. And David Thompson, you want to jump in on this. So, so go for it, my friend. I do just want to counter with one big thing you may be missing is okay. that people in this community don't give a shit about DC films at this point. Look okay. at the flash. I mean, mm-hmm. look at the flash. Yeah. That the flash. was supposed to be a massive hit success for Warner Brothers this summer. Like Barbie made up for that and more, sh- right. sure, but that was one of that, that is now one of the biggest flops in Warner Brothers history. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that was a Flash movie. That is yeah. one of the biggest superheroes in history, in comic yeah. book history, and it completely bombed. And we had these like No Way Home-esque cameos and all of this, right? Like they were really trying to recreate some kind of magic, and I think that's one big thing where really how we open this with this whole kind of flux fluctuation and this rollover into this new James Gunn universe. And I think that could be a success when it comes around, but just getting through blue beetle, like that's how we kind of put it on the Mm. direct podcast, like getting through blue beetle, getting through Aquaman. That's just how it feels as fans because we know there is once, once 2023 is over, it's going to feel completely different. It really feels disingenuous the promotion that gun saffron even just warner brothers in general have put towards these movies because right, right. they are films that they did not actually want to produce necessarily but they were handed the distribution rights to essentially and now they have to go about their business and try to make a buck so right. and i think the fans are getting quick to that and sure blue beetle i agree underdog story the projections are so low compared to other superhero movies. I mean, ridiculously low. So there is room to wiggle here. And like I said earlier, lower budget. But I just feel like there's so many people that are just completely turned off by DC movies right now. And that's why they brought James Gunn in to redo that and recreate that and completely rejuvenize the brand in a couple of years. But the Flash fundamentally, I think, damaged the brand. Mm. And only two months later, are we getting this Blue Beetle movie? And sure, some of the promotion for it, the director specifically, has been like, hey, th- this doesn't connect to really anything. And that's now a positive, right? That's right. now mm-hmm. being spun as a positive thing. Whereas a year ago, two years ago, any of these comic book movies, connections, connections, connections. And that was their lifeblood. But now it's in, with DC, it's like, uh oh, no, no, no. We don't have anything to do with The Flash. Nothing to do with Black Adam. Nothing to do with Shazam. We're just its own small story, which right. maybe it's good. I mean, the reviews are out and they're actually generally very positive. Um, I'm excited to see the movie just as like a general fan, but I am definitely dubious of its quality. 
uh, especially because it was going straight to streaming, which definitely kind of puts up some red flags, I would say. But Mm -hmm. I am just worried, just in my opinion, heading into this, projecting it, that so many people just don't want to see a DC movie right now. They're just not interested. Yeah, I mean, I there is, it seems to be a big disconnect and a big, you know, just c- canyon between the hardcore fans and the general audiences when it comes to superhero movies. Hardcore superhero fans seem to want everything to be connected and want that world. And if it's not, if it seems like it's going to be a waste of time because it's all going to reboot, they won't see a movie. I think a general audience after Endgame is fed up with the connectedness. They just want a good movie. They just want a fun, good, exciting movie. And that's why you saw something like Guardians, which now is a certified hit, but opened low because people were, they were wait and see on it. Where usually everybody, we were all general audience and comic book super fans were all waiting for the next installment. After Endgame, that changed. Now general audiences are looking for good, fun movies that don't seem like they're part of a cog or a machine. They're a cog in a machine. But the hardcores are still living in that world where they want connection. And I think that's a big division. So it's how many of those hardcores are going to reject this movie outright and how much general audience is okay with this concept and thinks Blue Beetle is going to be a good movie. We don't know. That's the big question mark. Well, I mean, and I'm looking at the reviews for Blue Beetle and just going through some of the top line statements in the reviews. And the thing that I'm noticing in the positive reviews are words like family, heart, um, you know, heartwarming. You're not seeing anything about action packed special effects villain you know and in the negative reviews the words you're seeing are unremarkable cheap looking low stakes that kind of thing so these are positive reviews that i think lend itself to seeming like this is a fine family film for families looking for something to do or just you know people who are looking for something nice with a little bit of action but there's definitely nothing that seems like this yells blockbuster. And obviously, well, listen, we all know this is not going to be a blockbuster. The question is more, where does this comp to something like what just came out a few weeks ago, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem? That That's sort of the, at this point, the level that I think Blue Beetle is aiming for. It is not going to be a superhero movie hit on the level of what we've seen in the last 10 years, you know? Uh, e- even on the level of a, 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 a Shazam 2 at this point, you know, the wells have been that poisoned. Blue Beetle feels like, can it get families to go? You know, so I think we're looking at what Haunted Mansion did or best case what Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is doing. To me, that's the best case of this Blue Beetle. I, I, I don't think it has any chance of doing anything near what even the failures of DC have done in the last year. It's, it's just doesn't seem like it's at that level. It's a family movie with TV level special effects. Apparently those review buzzwords that you're using. And I'm mm-hmm. glad that you invoked Shazam too. It's, it's, it's scary to hear those words because those are the words that Zachary Levi have been, has been bludgeoning us. Yeah. Continuously. He for loves months. saying heartwarming. Yeah. And he's family. And now he's calling everything else garbage and he, yeah. he, he can't get over it. It's like he's the rock or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's not quite sunk to rock levels, but Zachary no. Levi is hurtling that direction. Yes. One of his co-stars needs to, I don't know, the, the, the lady from Chuck needs to have some sort of online talk show that he can go on and she can lather his ass about uh shazam 2 and and then they can have that same sort of conversation and we can talk and comment on it and then it'll get pulled because the dc and the rock are after us um but yeah i think that that's the thing is that the family angle ain't gonna work right now because you got barbie which is a family movie you've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which had a great hold, and that's a family movie. Which is a really good movie, in my opinion. I love that movie. Yeah, It's it's super fun, and I think that that's not going to cut it. I think what Mm. really is going to make Blue Beetle 
any sort of a success is if you get that walk up business, if you get that non superhero yeah. fan, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be non superhero yeah. general audiences saying this looks cool for whatever reason. And that might not be the case. But I think when we were saying it's an underdog story, I think I have gone from being like, let's bury all superhero movies to feeling sort of bad and being like, I hope this isn't a huge disaster because, you know, Cobra Kai, that actor, I mean, I have nothing against, I mean, it'd be great to have young stars. I mean, it'd be great to have an actual young star be in a movie and it actually do well because Zachary mm -hmm. Levi is almost 40 or maybe 41. All these superhero I actors other than Tom, Tom Holland, other than um, Tom, uh, Tom Holland are old people. So, like, we need a new generation of stars, and it'd be nice to see that. Yeah. One thing, just jumping in here, is with, with Blue Beetle, I think it's fascinating just from a character standpoint, like from DC. He's such a C-level character, you mm -hmm. know, and that's kind of why he was heading, I think, to streaming initially. So, really, even... There's not that many hardcore Blue Beetle fans. I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. they're out there, right. but even then... If you are a hardcore Blue Beetle comic book fan, you might have issues with this movie. You might be against this movie. You might think this doesn't look like the comic books, right? Like comic book fans and fans of these franchises aren't always just yippee kaye, like I'm going to head out to the movie theater this weekend. They are judgmental typically, right? Mm. It's like they need to prove it. And I think that's really might be the case with this one. I don't think there's, I think many people that are backing this movie just enjoy these kinds of films want it to succeed feel a kind of empathy towards it which empathy isn't the main emotion that you want from a, as a studio for a movie right. you're releasing you know because that's that's just a recipe mm -hmm. for success jumping right off the jump right you, there's no excitement for it if it, like we've all got to a point where we don't gleefully want to see another superhero movie tank but that still is it a motivator to go pick this as your entertainment for the weekend, you know, just feeling bad for something. Now you touched on it's a C-level character. Is Blue Beetle a character that has any recent momentum in comic books? You know, because you think to I I'm looking at a list of 1990 superhero movies. And yeah, the 90s is an interesting superhero time because you had the Batman movies that were huge hits and you had some other, a few big, big, big ones, but the superhero craze as the thing at box office doesn't even start until after 2001 and the nineties are littered with, with, Oh, and Spider-Man of course. But, but there's so many of these, you know, judge dread and spawn and those type of, you know, uh, uh, comic book type movies, Blank Man, obviously not from a comic book, or maybe it was, I'm not sure, but a, a comic book movie, Tank Girl. And is Blue Beetle, is Blue Beetle a underground sort of beloved weird comic, or is it just purely a D level, it's there, but it has not had a surge in popularity in the comic book world? I wouldn't say that it has this really feverish like fan base of any kind. Right. It, Blue Beetle, as the film portrays, you know, and Clayton made the great point, it it does a little Spider-Man like, you know, he's a young kid. He's kind of like mm -hmm. given these great powers. And what does that mean? He's got some responsibility on his hands now, ladies and gentlemen. He has to deal with his family like that's I mean. Personally, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. That's my guy. And I lean a little more Marvel typically than DC, even though I think Batman's one of the best just comic book characters ever. Just mm -hmm. go read some of those comics and they're just so, so great. And some of the movies are awesome as well. But with Blue Beetle, when I watch, honestly, when I watch the trailers and I know obviously more than the general audience, but if I were a general audience member that saw Spider-Man Homecoming in 2017, I would think this was a spoof or some kind of direct ripoff yeah. of that movie. Because think about it. Young kid, given this suit that talks to him right. with these unknown abilities, and he has to now save the day. Like, it's literally beat for beat. And I saw a review. Um, I don't know who it was, but it was not a positive review. And he said it sound, it, it was very, like, um, formulaic and almost like, 
you could kind of see everything coming in a sense. Like it, you just didn't feel very like new and innovative. And I think what's winning now, you guys made a great point earlier. You know, it's not all about the connective tissue anymore. It's a lot about the quality, which it, which mm. it always should be. But right. look how what Captain Marvel did in 2019. That was right. because of connective tissue. That was right. not because of quality, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe it was the first leading like female um, superhero as well. That was some of it too. Right. But that was truly because it was the prelude to Avengers Endgame. Yep. Now, in 2023, what do we see? Shazam, tank. Flash, tank. What's being su- successful? Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Great movie. Not connected at all, really. It's just mm-hmm. a James Gunn's story. And Across the Spider-Verse, which is its own you know, turning into its own trilogy and has a very unique art style that people are really drawn to and also follows some of the most popular heroes ever with all the spider people. So mm-hmm. if Blue Beetle actually, you know, we'll see what the cinema score ends up being. I think an A minus would be a massive success for this one. Um, mm-hmm. And if it is that, then maybe we'll, we will see some legs because there is still some time here for those family friendly hits. But Golly, I mean, look, the reviews are looking pretty good so far, but this could have gone really bad if the reviews were tanking right now because there was just really, there's no, the, the floor for this one was so low compared mm-hmm. to other comic book movies. Because even think about just f- a few years ago, any MCU movie, they could have released Rainbow Unicorn, you know, and okay. it would have opened at 80 million, you right. know, it, right. it, it, would, it, it wouldn't have even been this low. So now there's really nothing for this movie to stand on. And that's what we're heading into here. That's what we're seeing. Right. And I mean, even something like the flash and obviously that had way more promotion and it has Batman 89 in it and much, much, much more going for it. But that was one of the most reviled movies in years with a lead who could not do anything for the movie was in the end, a negative for the movie that opened to 55 you know, just a few yeah. months ago. I, and again, much, much bigger production, bigger marketing for that than for Blue Beetle. So the fact that Blue Beetle's best case now is breaking 30 is just wild. And yeah, I think we're in a position with the reviews being okay that we're not going to see the worst case scenario where this very could have opened at 10 or 11 million. Mm-hmm. If, if everything yeah. broke wrong and this is a movie that's getting 50% on Rotten Tomatoes and people are making fun of it, it could have opened that low. It doesn't seem like that's the case. But the fact that best case for this superhero movie is maybe sniffing 30, and I mean, I I think we'll get to our final prediction at the end of the episode. It doesn't seem like it's going to get to that. It really does show how quickly the bottom has fallen out on this genre in terms of, like you said, There's big, big properties like Guardians or Spider-Man or movies that people love, but there is no longer the uh, uh, rising tide that lifts all these boats on the side. These boats are now out to sea to fend for themselves. And when they have to fend for themselves now, we're seeing that they can actually sink even though they're superhero movies. And I I think the other thing, too, that's important to think about now, too, is we're living in a post-Barbenheimer yeah, theater going world. And I, you know, I've said this in uh, in previous episodes that for a lot of young people, Barbie is their Batman 1989. Mm -hmm. That is that was such a huge movie for our generation, uh, me and Pat's generation. And it feels like Barbie's the same way. And then when you couple it with Oppenheimer, which for a lot of people, a lot of young people is their first quote unquote grown up movie, the first serious movie they'll ever see. And that thing is in the top five domestic right now for the summer. And that's a movie that I mean, yes, big director. He did Batman. He did, you know, big hits. But still, people went and sat through a three plus hour movie about an atomic bomb. And I think that is going to make people think about their choices as to what they're going to go see. And something like Blue Beetle might seem like baby shit to them now. It might seem like, oh, that's the kind of movie I used to see before I saw Oppenheimer. There's a possibility that there's a big mind change going on right now that we haven't seen yet. And this is the first superhero movie, true superhero movie to open post Barbenheimer. I don't count Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because that's a 
IP. It's definitely a kid's family movie. And it's always going to do something. It seems to stand apart from other superhero franchises. Do you agree with that, David, that like Turtles seems different than superhero in a way? Yeah, I would say definitely it. And, you know, it's not under a DC or Marvel brand. It really seems like its own kind of franchise, its own kind of thing. And, you know, the most recent before this movie, the CGI um, Turtles movies, those felt like an attempt to become, you know, more so of those comic book movie feeling um, films. But now back with Mutant Mayhem, it really, I think, solidifies itself as just something different, you know, something mm-hmm. fun and Really, I think there's more of a there's a unique, different connection, I would say, nostalgia wise for TMNT than other of these movies, because sure, they keep remaking them, but it's not with all these different actors and mm-hmm. all these different things. You know, there are some very just like standard things to understand going into these movies. Hey, each four, well, you know, the four to- turtles and what do they do? Right. What's their little shtick? And you just go from there. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And 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 to the point of people being sick or at least younger people feeling like they've outgrown superhero movies something like the turtles doesn't worry them because they don't have to worry that there's going to be a jason momoa aquaman stinger in a turtles movie or that the Mm -hmm. turtles are going to have to connect to shield in the mcu the turtles are their own thing these mcu and dc movies that maybe teenagers are getting sick of right now the turtles don't have any of that stink on them even though and i don't even think for the most part at this point people don't connect the turtles to being comic book they connect them to no. the cartoon series they connect them to video games honestly like turtles yeah. gets the super mario brothers rub in that there's probably a lot of people who think of the video games when they think of these ninja turtles i don't think they did definitely don't think of them as superhero movies but yeah that's why again i go back to i feel like blue beetle uh is going to almost live or die as a family film. And Clayton, I think you're right in that it can get a boost if, you know, underserved audiences see this as a movie that has a Hispanic and Latino cast and that draws a more diverse audience out. But I think those are the two things it has going for it. I think superhero mm-hmm. at this point is a negative. It's, is it a family film that you could, you know, take your kids out to at the end of the summer and will Hispanic and Latino moviegoers like that it's got a movie with a diverse cast. Uh, Other than that, I don't think it has much. And and the empathy for a little movie that could have just been put in the Jerry Lewis Holocaust clown vault. I think that's more, I think that empathy is not widespread. I think it's me and you feeling bad, beating up yeah. on a little movie like this when, I mean, and I it's, think it's reviews, stupid to say. I think it little, helps the yeah. reviews probably a little bit, you know, reviewers who probably disliked Blue Beetle as much as they dislike the Flash. They just don't have the same animosity towards yes. Blue Beetle that they would have for the Flash. I think that's actually where it plays is. It could be as good or bad as The Flash, but the Rotten Tomato score will be higher because it's a little movie that could. Yes, I agree. And I even actually didn't mind The Flash. Like The the CGI was terrible, but there was a lot of it that I thought was actually a pretty interesting story. Like There was some fun to be had there. Um, I think the box office doesn't reflect the quality of that film because there is some in there that I thought was actually pretty good that i was like having a good time i was laughing i was enjoying myself not everything was awesome but there were some heights to me some real strengths there that just will never get regarded to or like alluded to ever again because right. everyone no. wants to trash in that movie and that's what you said it's like about perception and about expectations like that movie had these i mean look wb put on the all-time propaganda act for the flash we got tom yeah. cruise coming out tom Stephen cruise. king off with screens unbelievable i mean tom cruise literally i mean he, he cursed himself look at mission impossible yeah you know, look at that man he he what he he ate the bad apple dude what are you doing yeah. talking about the flash look at dead reckoning you just got barbenheimer tom yeah 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 he blew all his credibility that he'd been building up for 40 years now and he blew it all by <laughs> saying the flash is what movie theaters need right now it's the greatest superhero crazy, movie ever crazy he blew statement. it he blew it he could get well, it back I, 
Uh, actually, he didn't he it. say that? He's. I think didn't he say that about Blue Beetle? That Blue Beetle is what theaters need right now. <laughs> that that Tom Cruise said that. So oh boy, we'll see if if uh, his bad luck continues with this. But he, uh, he's lucky that there is an acting strike right now, and he can't give any more. <laughs> Uh, reviews uh, reviews before these movies come out that we, we can't have him out there right now saying that the marvels is going to be the greatest movie he's ever seen because he's just well, not he's... allowed to talk about movies and, and, and that that tom cruise needs this strike he needs to not talk about other people's movies for a couple of more months well he did say the last voyage of the demeter was the best vampire movie since interview with a vampire he wow. did say that so, no he didn't say that but we could say anything and you believe it we could say yeah, he said yeah. any movie was great and you believe it so before we move on to the other big movie this weekend you know since we have our resident comic book superhero expert here just want to get a few months out temperature check on the next big mcu movie the marvels so this is the sequel to captain marvel it is, and you explain this to us. As far as I understand it, this is also the offshoot of two to four Disney Plus MCU shows, characters that have been introduced in streamo shows and not really been part of movies yet. So a couple of months out, this movie comes out in November. It had been pushed back from a late July release. It was going to come out a week after Barbenheimer. Yeah, it was that in the Haunted Mansion a- slot. Wow, yeah. that is I, I I have not thought of that in a long time, but now to think of you the imagine? Marvels coming out a week after Barbenheimer. I mean, talk to us about this movie, but David, what would that have done? Would that movie have just been a historic open to like fifteen million dollar collapse if it had opened a week after Barbenheimer? No, I don't think so. I think it would have been very interesting. I would love to see the alternate timeline when that yeah. does, when that did happen, because I really don't know. I do think it that, would have that's still a done what, very well. That's a what if. On that, that, I've never watched it, but that, that Disney Plus <laughs> Marvel show, what if? There's your what if. What if Captain Marvel had opened the week after Barbenheimer? Yeah, I, I would love to watch that episode. Um, But no, Captain Marvel, or the Marvels, I should say, Um, I actually think this movie is going to do very well opening weekend. Now, okay. I do not think it's going to hit a billion like the first one did for the reasons we talked about earlier. That was, that was a movie leading into the biggest movie of all time, essentially, or one of the biggest movies of all time. Um, So it's not going to do that. Um, but I do think there's a lot going for it. Now, it has a new director. Not a lot of people liked the first Captain Marvel movie, even though it, even though it made a lot of money. Mm-hmm. It's not relying so heavily on Brie Larson's Carol Danvers, which I think might be a positive for some people. It's not even branded as Captain Marvel anymore. It's the Marvels, you know, this kind of new um, Trinity team, essentially, with Kamala Khan, uh, played by Iman Vellani, who is Miss Marvel, um, a young... Um, amazing hero in my opinion that series on disney plus is one of my favorite the mcu has done up to this point you know up and coming you know just young and energetic and exciting character with a great backstory her powers are okay made some adjustments from the comics but generally speaking amon Vellani is one of my favorite additions to marvel in the last 10 10, or 5, 10 years, I guess. Like She's really, I think, great in the role. So I'm excited to see her. Um, I think there will be a little bit of pullback from Captain Marvel because people will see this movie and think, ah, I didn't love that one. Um, Then we have Teona Paris, who is Photon, Monica Rambeau, another hero. Um, She was in WandaVision. So this is in very, very much so, um, this is that connective tissue we were talking about. Mm -hmm. This is Marvel. This is the MCU. This is what they do, right? This is... Um, them having a kind of cross a mini crossover event kind of bridging the gap between all these characters two tv shows multiple tv shows even secret invasion which was a big flop um for disney this past summer terrible Mm -hmm. show absolutely atrocious and completely completely slaughtered what could have been because it's such a great comic book line a lot of people are really big fans it's a really cool concept and that show stunk but that is the connection for Samuel Jackson to now be in the Marvel. So there is some star power. I expect it to do well. Uh, I hope to be invited back before that one hits theaters to get some more more, uh, up-to-date numbers. But I do think sitting here today, I definitely expect it to make over 100 million 
opening weekend. And I wow. think for the MCU, look, DC's brand is tarnished a lot. I'm not sure Marvel's is as much pe- as much as people may think. Um, and we'll see with the actor strike. There's still a chance they delay it because they may want to get that extra juice from their actors. Um, and I know they filmed some stuff beforehand, but we'll see how that goes. And that'd be a real downer because they have such a charismatic cast on this one. And I do think the concept of it, for me personally, looks fascinating. It looks fun. Um, they're basically their powers are like um, intertwined with each other. So it seems like in the film, it'll it'll begin as kind of a problem. And then their solution to it could end up leading to like some badass fight scenes where they're basically like switching spots and switching powers. And it's just some, some comic book shit that people get really nerded out about like me. Um, I, so I'm glad to see such positivity towards that. Cause that has felt like one of the most negative, uh, uh, you know, buzzes for a superhero movie in a long time. Obviously a lot of it is bad faith, weird internet stuff with Brie Larson, but right. You know, I do think when you mention something like secret evasion, the TV show, there is the issue that, there's been more other than guardians, which people do kind of silo off at this point as like not even thinking about as Marvel, even though that is the most recent Marvel movie, but secret yeah, invasion is going to be the project that leads into the Marvels for people. And there's that bad, you know, mojo coming out of that. And so it's good to hear. I'm glad to hear that you are still positive on this movie. We'll definitely have you on in you know right before it comes out or right when it comes out for sure um i i you know i i think the quantum mania line is the betting line for this movie and right now i still feel the under on that i feel like marvel non you know classic marvel you know guardians or if iron man were in a movie or spider-man the stuff that's not the Avengers era Marvel, I feel is in decline. So to me, the Marvels should open under quantum mania, but mm. you're, you're the expert. And if you're feeling good about it, that's got to count for something. So it's, it's very interesting though, because that next run of Marvel movies, there's no slam doink hitting them. You know, it's the Marvels. It's a captain America without captain America. And then it is. God, I, we, we love we love Julie Louis Dreyfus, but you know the Thunderbolts. Um, well, I would say Deadpool three would be the one in there. Deadpool three, um, yes, that, that's, that's gonna, probably going to make that. I think could make a billion. Yes, um, that'll be huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's and they be need that. To, they need to squeeze that in before Thunderbolts and Captain America. I know, two or three or four, whatever. Yeah. Captain America: New World Order. They are going to need that surefire hit before possibly two bombs come out afterwards yeah and the strike screwing them over because they they push deadpool 3 way up the calendar to yeah. their marquee premiere yeah. early may slot next year and they have not completed filming they're on complete pause now and new world or brave new world is now the name of it for the new captain america movie um is july 26th and it's apparently much further along in terms of its filming um thunderbolts is not even close uh, right. i think it's way way behind so that could they're gonna kick the can i think down with even more of these films especially with bob Iger back and he's basically saying how we don't want to be overspending on these things and we're still kind of seeing some of that mm, i don't know we're still seeing the overspending with disney and the mcu right now it's, you saw with the secret invasion you know you're spending all this money on this this crappy tv series um so we'll see uh, but deadpool 3 i think is a big winner Back on the Marvels, I think also in terms of what I'm saying is I am also I'm I'm being a little subjective. You know, to me, I'm excited about it because I like I said, I did really love the Miss Marvel series. And for me, mm -hmm. that's a really po that's, that connection is a big positive for yep. me. Um, so I'm kind of seeing this and just based on the trailers and it's my own personal opinion. I am projecting this to have good word of mouth and positive reviews. Now, if that doesn't happen. Obviously, that changes things. Like Quantum Mania, for instance, like that had right. some hype going into it, but then it just wasn't very good. It let everyone down, and it didn't have the hype as Multiverse of Madness, which was riding the coattails of No Way Home, which right. was also a bit of a letdown. So the Marvels, it's going to be, and I'm excited to talk about it more in depth when it gets around. 
it's going to really be, as we're kind of talking about, a big test for Marvel. Because what if it does bomb? You know, what it, I think it, it we enter code red, you know, alert, right. alert. Mm-hmm. Let's let's hit right. the big red button, Kevin Feige. Let's let's go back to basics a little bit here because right. they're getting wildly experimental over at Marvel and really spreading themselves thin. So I do think we are reaching if things keep going down, down, down and bombing both critically. I mean, if Loki sucks, which is by all means going to be one of their best shows because the first season was a very big hit on Disney Plus. If Loki sucks, if the Marvel sucks, if this Echo series sucks, Mm -hmm. you know, we're going to be seeing them completely, I think, change their plans, especially when you consider that Jonathan Majors is the big bad of the MCU right now. We don't know what his fate is um, right. in terms of the criminal justice system and his fate continuing with this role in the MCU. Right, mm-hmm. right. And and I'm just looking, and not again, not to get too far ahead, but looking at the release calendar around the Marvels, and the week before, right now, and this could move, but yeah. June 2 is scheduled to open up November 3rd, and then the Marvels November 10th. And yes. that could be a Barbenheimer situation. Dune is not going to be Barbie. It's not going to be Barbenheimer, obviously. But it, it could be that case where the younger filmgoers get to go see a quote-unquote good movie, a quote-unquote real movie. And that's what they get excited about. And they see Chalamet in a movie that is, could be a Best Picture movie. And, oh, there's Their this. girl Zendaya. Huge. Zendaya. I mean, actually I actually in it love this time. Her. Yeah. Yep. Right. So you could could have that situation. The first Dune was not a barn burner. It you know squeaked out to over 100 domestic, open to like 30 something. But the second one has higher expectations, yeah. and it's the type of movie that post Barbenheimer could be the choice of the young people. And then a week later, Marvels comes out, and again, you're right. The reviews are going to be key, and the quality is going to be key. But if that movie's not good, and Dune two comes out, and is the critically acclaimed, this is going to be up for the Oscar. That could be what the younger people go see, a second weekend of Dune 2 instead of the Marvel. So it's a really interesting post-Barbenheimer superhero world we head into. Yeah, and I see Dune 2 being the one that moves more than uh, the Marvels right now. If I were to make a project- okay. projection, just because they've been more vocal about that, just Warner yep. Brothers in general being open more to the idea and thinking about it openly, and the Zendaya effect. If you want, I mean, and Timothy Chalamet, but like that is a movie that I think is heavily, heavily reliant on its promotion from its actors. And yes. the fact that Dune, like for Warner Brothers, Dune is a huge opportunity to make. I mean, Dune 1 was a success for what it was, but Dune 2 specifically is that big opportunity mm-hmm. to hit a home run and be like, this is a new big franchise, right? And right. everyone's going to go tune into this. So, and I think they believe it is a really good movie. I like the first one a lot, even though it was kind of slower paced. And I'm excited for the second one. But they want to make sure they're opening that with all of their artillery, right? Yeah. All their power. They don't want to release. Right. Like Marvel has a little, like we talked about this and how Marvel, you know, they're getting in a very dangerous spot. But Marvel still has a lot to fall back on. You know, they still have right. this very huge empire that they've created. Dune, you want to put all your best chips, you know, you want to push everything in for that movie. So I could see that one possibly moving if we get to, I'd say, you know, mid-September, October, and the strike's still happening. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, that movie, you cannot, and we'll talk, we'll get to it in a minute, another movie that I think is hurt by not having actor promotion, but Dune 2 cannot come out if Chalamet and Zendaya and... Let's not forget Austin Butler in his big post yes. Elvis uh, yeah. first movie playing the villain of Dune 2. You got to have Austin Butler promoting this movie and Zendaya and Chalamet. So I think you're right. If the strike is still on I- in another month and it looks like you're not going to have it settled before Dune 2, that is very likely to move. Aquaman you keep because you just got to. You got to pull the Band-Aid off and just release this. But yeah, I think that's the Warner Brothers movie to move. And that would be good for the Marvels in November. But let's, guys, let's get into, there is another big movie opening this weekend. Uh, We're not going to give it nearly as much time as Blue Beetle. But Strays comes out this Friday, August 18th. This is the uh, uh, R-rated comedy 
talking dog comedy with Jamie Foxx, Will Ferrell providing voices of these foul mouthed dogs. They want to, and I'm not giving this away, not spoiling anything. They want to bite off the genitalia of Will Forte. And that is the basic plot of this movie. Dogs, not animated dogs. It's real life dogs and the voices of Will Ferrell, Jamie Foxx and others. A couple of months ago on this show, you know, we had podcast Jesus himself. Kirk Minahan was on this show for the very first time. And we were talking about the state of big studio comedies. And at that time, No Hard Feelings was coming out. But we were all looking ahead to Strays as this is a movie that felt like the big summer comedy hit. And, you know, as we get close now, a few days out, the main thing that we're hearing is that the pre-sales are not strong on this movie. And this is a movie mm-hmm. that we thought could, man, open to 20, 30 million dollars. And based on the pre-sales, the projections are closer to 12, 13 million. So, David, you are the comic book guy, but you are also a, a young guy, you know, and this is a movie that is targeted at the young uh, virile male demographic. What is the buzz that you are feeling in your group on strays? You know, this is a movie that's going to live and die with the young male audience. And are is anyone talking about strays when you go out uh, to the bars, to the clubs at night? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure. Me and my wife are pumped to see it, though. We got our tickets for Sunday. You know, we're going to right. I'm, I'm going to see Blue Beetle tomorrow because that's what I do. Like, it's mm-hmm. honestly feels like part of the job at this point. Like, I'm going to an early screening and I'm excited to go see it. Um, mm-hmm. But strays is kind of the one this weekend where it doesn't feel anything like work quote unquote and i'm just excited to go laugh at this movie because we've seen um you know in recent times in the movie theater the strays trailer just pop up i remember it first played before we saw um no hard feelings and i'm like this looks amazing this looks so funny so i'm pumped for it um i'm not sure it's gonna be like this massive success it's really hard to get these these comedies off the ground these days like even amongst just like kind of my buddies like we i feel like my generation at least maybe everyone at this point we just live in the past a lot it's like do we really want to go see a new comedy or do we want to rewatch super bad for the millionth time you know it's mm-hmm. it's all this where it's do we really want to watch this or there's something new on netflix or blah 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 so this one looks hilarious um i think it is going to play to a pretty um interesting demographic certainly like someone like me that just wants to go have a good time maybe go stop by one of those like little amc bars and grab a beer and, and walk mm-hmm. in and check it out Oh, mcguffins uh, yeah mcguffins uh stop by mcguffins on the way in um but yeah I, i'm looking forward to the film but box office wise i actually expect to you know an intermediate success here yeah um so you know it's been getting some comparisons to some August comedy releases, which there actually are, there is a history of August comedy releases. And we have a, uh, right now, I, I won't, I won't say his name because he hasn't gotten the job yet, but we have a prospective new, uh, member to our internship program. And, uh, this prospective intern, he threw out these as, you know, of course there's good boys is the big one. He also threw out 2016 sausage party. As yeah. a recent August comedy release, that was a success. And that's very similar in the sense that it is, you know, that was fully animated. So it's all these comedy stars doing voices. And I think the big problem that Strays has right now is unfortunately, none of these celebrity comedic actors could go out there and promote this movie. And I think that's probably the main reason why there's just a lack of chatter about this because obviously this is not ip this is not a sequel it lives and dies based on you know stars getting people to know that it exists and right now will ferrell can't get out there i saw uh, there's an episode of fly on the wall with david spade and dana carvey drop a little forte i think they've been banking episodes for the last three years but who knows? I haven't listened to that yet. I don't even know if Will Forte was allowed to talk about strays on that episode. So you don't have the stars of the movie talking about it, unlike something like Sausage Party, where I'm sure when that came out, Seth Rogen and Kristen Wiig and all those actors were probably everywhere 
chatting it up. So, like, Clayton, do you count that as the reason why the prospects have dimmed for strays, or were we just always way too high on the prospects for this movie? Well, first off, 2016, when the Sausage Party came out, you might as well be talking about 100 years ago when it comes to comedies. I don't think you can comp anything that's come out post. Uh, honestly, like the turning point was when Longshot came out against the um, Endgame. Okay. I don't think a wow. big wow. comedy has really happened since pre-covid so we're we're just st still just looking at comedies just not hitting not hitting not hitting Co pure comedies not comedies that are action and not comedies that are animation and not com you know right, comedies right, yeah. plus something else just like funny well, things happening on dog. screen yes so i comedy. think Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, you know, looking at good boys numbers, looking at hot uh, sausage party numbers, that is not going to matter. What we have to look at is no hard feelings, joyride. Those are the comps we can really talk about because those have happened after COVID when people are actually going to the theaters in numbers. Right. So will this make more than the 15 million that no hard feelings open to? That's a question. Yeah. Is it go? It's it's got to make more than Joyride open to because what a Joyride open to? Joyride open to five million. Like, I want to say five or six. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be in between there somewhere. Uh, I mean, hopefully a little bit higher. But that's what we're talking about. I mean, we're we're the the days of even talking about uh blockers as a con right i just right, think we right. can't talk about yeah. it because we just because comedy just hasn't rebounded post-covid and it was already on the decline pre-covid I, I do i do wonder you know they move this from june to um they move this from june to august and and at the time a reason given was at that point the sag strike hadn't started there was just mm -hmm. the writer's strike, but because of the yeah. writer's strike, talk shows went dark. And yeah. a big reason that w was thought to be why Strays moved is because they wanted the actors to be able to go on talk shows to promote it. So they figured, we'll move it to August. The writer's strike will be done by then. And so Will Ferrell could do carpool karaoke, he could go on Johnny, he could go on Dave in August. And, and Jamie now Fox. Jamie Foxx is also in this movie, Pat. So yes. that's also oh, somebody to promote Jamie Foxx. A hundred percent. Jamie Foxx was going to go around. That, those were the big two. And instead they moved it to August and they missed the chance for those actors to do any promotion. Cause if this movie had opened in June, sure the the late night talk shows would have been dark, but you still could have had Jamie Foxx and Will Ferrell giving interviews, going on the internet shows, which, in all honesty, are more important at this point than going on late night mm -hmm. shows. Get Will Ferrell, the hot on, wings, hot ones, hot, yeah, exactly. <laughs> on Wired and all those other shows. Yep, it does start to feel like they should have shot their shot and left this to open up the week after No Hard Feelings or the week before. I forget when it was going to open. It also would have opened in that June month when you had a bunch of high profile underperformers yes. and Strays probably could have done decent business going yeah. up against the flash and going up against a transformers movie that people were met about as opposed to now it's opening in August and there have been August comedies, but it's also a time when the college kids they're getting back to the campus. They're setting their rooms up. They're mm -hmm. checking out. Who, who who's living down the hall this year? Let me go say hi. You know what that means. You know, so so the college kids are starting to get busy, and you got strays coming out now. And I starting to feel like June could have been a better time. This movie hasn't opened yet, so who knows? But it does start to feel like they kind of screwed up by pushing it out two months. No, Pat, I totally agree because the other thing is that I saw a lot of commercials for strays during the NBA playoffs. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So many where yes. people were hyped about this movie. And then yes. when they saw, Oh wait, it's not coming out till August. What? I yeah. mean, we're in the business. We talk about movies for yeah. a living and I still was during the months being like, wait, when does Stray come out? Stray's comes out? Yeah. Not till the end of August. I've seen commercials right. for this for too long. People are already going to think it came and went. 
Yeah. yeah. That I think it's not the quality of this movie or the hook of this movie or the preview for this movie, which everybody seems to really like. It's the is this coming out? When is this coming out? I think there's that confusion there where yeah. people are already going to think it's already passed. And maybe they'll walk by a theater and be like, oh, that's playing. I'll see that in a couple days. But I was walking somewhere else. Right. I think that's the big problem. Yeah, that's a great point. The delay does start to make this movie feel like it was actually a dump when that wasn't the case. So I'm going to throw mm -hmm. this out here now as we head into our, given our predictions, as a barometer for strays. And I think we're all going to have the same answer, but let's see. So a movie that strays should be compared to is 2009's Hotel for Dogs. I think that is a, a movie. Listen, it was a dog it's a, movie. It's a kid's movie. But it's still a dog movie. <laughs> Talking dog movie. <laughs> Why don't you do a Beverly Hills Chihuahua then if we're going for it? Which I think was I'll actually kind of a hit. Well, Hotel for Dogs in 2009 opened to $17 million on its way to making $73 million. So strays, we all agree, no chance to reach Hotel for Dogs numbers. Is that, I don't is that think a given? so. I don't think so. So no. I'm going to look up real quick. Beverly Hills. What about Chihuahua. the uh, the Channing Tatum uh, movie? <laughs> Dog from like last Dog. year. That, that, was up to. that is a great comp. Let's see. I mean, that well, that was a leggy me, movie. Yeah. That, Boys, let, let me let me blow your mind really fast. Uh, okay. I, I got the numbers for Beverly Hills Chihuahua. OK. And this opened in October of 2008 guess can you guess what it opened to um okay so then I would imagine that it's a bigger based on the tone of your voice it's a bigger hit than one would think so 20 million yeah. 18 million 29.3 wow. million wow and it legged wow. out to ninety four point five wow. million dollars. That was a different time. That wow. should have been the comparison for Blue Beetle. Wow. Was Beverly Hills Chihuahua? <laughs> I mean, I it's mean, not going to be. I mean, that's that's. <laughs> let's see. I mean, will Beverly Hills Chihuahua? I mean, will Blue Beetle like more than Beverly Hills Chihuahua? That's a so question. Then, that's I mean, a I question. think. I think we could look at Beverly Hills Chihuahua's opening weekend as the barometer for both movies for both. because <laughs> will Blue Beetle's opening weekend get to Beverly Hills Chihuahua's opening weekend? And will the entire domestic run of strays get to the 29 million that Beverly Hills Chihuahua got to? I don't think either oh, of those I are mean, a guarantee. Yeah. I mean, I do That'd think strays shame. will do better, but strays we'll see because the buzz on this is really fallen pretty dim recently. Yeah. So you don't and, know. And dog and dog opened to 14.8, but that was a leggy movie. Mm -hmm. It opened in February yeah. of 2022 and it ended up with 61. Yeah. That was good for that time. Yeah. That was a four legged movie right there. So, I yeah. mean, I think let's get into it. And let's get to, unless I've missed any other business, can we get to our top five predictions for the weekend? And let's give our numbers with at least the two new movies that are opening up. So sure. uh, I, I always pose to the guest whether you want to go first or last. David, would you like to be the first one to give your top five predictions or the last one? Middle I'll, always seems like no one wants to go in the middle. That's true. I'll go first. All right, so Brave David man. Thompson of The Direct, if you could give us your predicted top five for the weekend of August 18th. Yeah, so I'll stick with Blue Beetle at number one. I do think it mm -hmm. could be close with Barbie because Barbie, I, it's hard to vote against Barbie these days. I've just, mm -hmm. I've learned my lesson. You just can't bet against it. Um, so maybe Barbie gets number one, but I'm going Blue Beetle number one. Um, I said it on uh, The Direct podcast the other day. I'm sticking with $26 million. As the reviews come out, I think that could be the baseline, actually. There could get a little more, you know, walk-up business, as you guys have been saying, and it could hit that $30 million mark. But I'm sticking to under $30 million. I don't think mm -hmm. the buzz is there. I think there's plenty of people that have no interest. So $26 million, which I believe would be the lowest in the history of the DCEU. Um, number two, I would have Barbie. 
probably right on its tail. Um, I have no idea, you know, necessarily like a direct number, but probably right below it. Uh, in my opinion, you know, not a very steep drop at all. Here's where it gets fishy. I'm going Oppenheimer at number three. I don't wow. think it's going. I don't think Strays is going to overdo Oppenheimer. I feel like Oppenheimer wow. still has a ton of buzz around it. There's still a lot of people that have not seen it that want to see it. It's still doing IMAX business. That's right. It is still doing IMAX business. And I think that could, you know, keep going a little bit. I think Blue Beetle is taking over some of the spots um, this weekend, but there are still some big premium screens that Oppenheimer is getting. And I think it has a weird, I mean, it's a phenomenon. It has a weird rewatchability to it. Like people want, it's mm -hmm. a Nolan film where it's like, you kind of want to take it in twice. So um, for Oppenheimer, I'll have it in that, I don't know, 14, 15 range maybe. And then right below that, I've got strays at about 12 million. So I'm going to go with 12 million for strays. Um, okay. I think the promotion has just been terrible. I don't think it's been good yeah. at all. Like It was good at been... one point in time. Sure. That's but a problem. When, right before it comes out, no one knows right. it's coming out. I mean, yeah. I really wouldn't. I would have forgotten about the film if it wasn't for going to see No Hard Feelings and I think Joyride. And it played in pre in the actual movie theater beforehand. You know, it's not this thing that's been on like my social media, on YouTube, no. or really at TV. I haven't seen it anywhere besides in a movie theater. And I think that's really a telltale sign. It's going to barely crack 10 million. So I'm going with 12 million. It'll be okay, um, but not a big hit at all. And then at five, I'll go uh, TMNT. Um, and that'll probably, I think, I think that movie should have you know continue to have a little bit of legs it's not a massive hit but i don't expect anything bigger than a i don't know 40 percent drop for that one mm -hmm. heading into mm -hmm. i believe it's third weekend uh, if i have that correctly so yeah that, that'd be my top five all right so clayton would you like to follow up david there i love the the uh you know putting oppenheimer ahead of uh strays that is a big swing there but it makes a lot of sense so clayton do you agree with david's top five let's see i don't think that's that big of a swing to be honest with you because wow. blue beetle's gonna be i i hmm i do think blue beetle's gonna be number one okay so and i agree it's gonna be around the 20 i'm gonna go the thing to me is what's going to keep it from being at the lowest, lowest end is the walk up business. Right. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go around 23 on this one. And, and, and like David, I do think Barbie's number two, but it's going to be close. It's going to mm -hmm. be very, very close. I love that Oppenheimer call and I um, am not going to steal it because that would be wrong. But I think this is a toss up as well you know, I might go with, I might go with that because I just think strays honestly is, wow. is again, for all the reasons we've mentioned, I just don't think it's got enough awareness mm -hmm. right now with everything else going on. Like you said, college kids going back to school. So I think this could go under 10. Wow. I think I think wow. Oppenheimer's three strays goes under 10. It's going to be around nine million dollars. Nine. Nine. And then five. I agree. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem has a good hold. Kids are going back to school, but maybe this will be a nice treat for them before they go back. They get to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So that's the top five. And now. Just for me and Pat, we've had this mm -hmm. conversation down here at the bottom. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Is this the weekend? It it overtakes Sound of Freedom in your opinion, Pat. Say yes or no when you go through yes. yours. I'm going to say it doesn't. I'm, I'm wow. going to the Sound of Freedom. I, I, I think it's, yep, you agree with us? I do. I think Sound of Freedom definitely stays in front of Mission Impossible this weekend. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. I would, well, de definitive about that. Love definitive. it. Love it. Definitive. definitive. <laughs> because I don't see, I think Sound of Freedom, it's crazy to say, is way more leggy than Mission Impossible. Like, yeah. there's people crawling out of holes to go see Sound of Freedom. Yes. Like, yeah. if you were to see Mission Impossible, you would have seen it by now. Wow. Yeah. Well, I agree. All right. Um, I, I'll give my predictions here. So, I'm going to go Barbie 
number one. Oh, I, I love it. That. I love it. Love it. I do think the hold on this, you know, it dropped thirty six percent last weekend. I think it could actually hold even a little better this weekend. I think this this is a little bit of a hey, let's catch up on what we haven't seen or let's see it again type of thing because the excitement isn't there for any of the new releases. And listen, the last couple of weekends, you've had some things people were excited about. There was exci- genuine excitement for Turtles, even genuine excitement for The Meg because that movie is a sequel and had fans. It doesn't feel like there's genuine excitement for the new releases. So I do think this is going to be one of those last weekends where people really feel a, hey, let's go see Barbie again, or I haven't seen it yet. And so I think it's going to hold even better than it did last weekend. And if it drops low 30%, you know, then that means that it's going to be like end up at maybe like something? 23 or 24. And I, I think that's number one at 23 or 24. Cause I'm going blue beetle at just a straight 20. Yeah. I okay. think again, I think this is a family film that if it's going to go higher, it's going to be because uh, an underserved demographic is going to come out in a much bigger way. But even with that, I do see this playing as a family film and a family film with lower Q score than Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion opened to what, 23 million? And Haunted Mansion is a thing that millions and millions of people have written or know about. Blue Beetle is not that. So to me, this feels like a lower rent Haunted Mansion type film. And so that means 20. Number three, yeah, you know, our prospective new intern, I'll shout him out that he has strays at number three. He thinks that it's 15 million. His comps are Sausage Party and Good Boys. And I know, Clayton, you say that's a prehistoric time. But this is a younger person who does still feel that there is uh, a younger buzz for this movie. All that said, I'm going to stick with my fellow old farts and say Oppenheimer is number three. I saw Oppenheimer for a second time last weekend, and one of the things that happened is coming out of the show, uh, I took my mom to see it. We ended up in a lobby chat with several older ladies who had gone to see it together, probably widows having the time of their life now that these guys are dead. (laughs) And they loved Oppenheimer, and the thing they said is, I got to see it again because there were some things I missed and some things I'm not clear about. And I think that's something that Oppenheimer has going for it. It's very confusing, but it's confusing in a way that people want to understand it. So that means repeat business. So all that said, I agree. Oppenheimer is number three and strays, you know, Oppenheimer can make 14 and, and strays 11 or 12 at number four. And then, yeah, number five is is Turtles Slam Doink. I mean, here's here's the question. Is there any chance that Turtles ends up ahead of Strays? We all have it at five. I thought about it. Yeah. I but think it's close. It's I think it might close. get close. Because I, I do think Turtles is going to make around 10, right. you know, 10 or 11. Like, Turtles is going to have a pretty good hold, and that puts it in Strays territory. Hell, you know what? I talked myself into it. I'm going Turtles 4. So I'm going Barbie 1, Blue Beetle 2, Oppenheimer 3, Turtles 4, Strays 5. Wow. I, I think I think Strays uh, uh, is going to have the bottom drop out of it. Wow. Did you just get nuts without asking us if we wanted to get nuts? I mean, can I continue you gotta to ask get nuts? Us. Can I continue to get nuts? Well, because you should have asked for permission first. Well, can I continue to get nuts? You give me yes, can I, you can continue to get nuts. So I will continue to get nuts and I will officially say this is the weekend where Sound of Freedom is bested finally by Tom Cruise Dead Reckoning Part One. Um, I think this has got to be the weekend where it happens. And this is our perspective intern. He does agree. He does think this will finally be the weekend. MI7 overtakes Sound of Freedom. Um, you know. The Sound of Freedom thing is got to be waning at this point. And I get what you're saying. Anyone who wanted to see Dead Reckoning has seen it. But at this point, the the audience for that movie is older. 
And it's an older audience that waits. And I think that older audience saw Sound of Freedom a few times already. And now this is the weekend where they'll catch up with Mission Impossible. So that's oh, uh, I think nuts. Mission Impossible is so in the rear view. I think like a lot of our listeners will say, Pat, uh, you're showing your your political leanings by by picking uh, <laughs> let's not let's not bring politics into this Clayton, look, uh, of all things to bring into the show let's not do that and mission impossible and sound of freedom last weekend they were within two hundred thousand of each other so it's very close Ooh. and mission impossible did have a better hold last week and then sound of freedom did so i think the math you know sound of freedom has a bigger screen count right now but they were near tied last weekend and Mission Impossible is holding a little better. So I do predict the flip flop. See, well, that's where I think that Mission Impossible is going to completely just drop because I think the I think it's going to lose more theaters. And I think that it's just going to kind of drop out in a way that Sound of Freedom will still chug along because people are still buying tickets forward. You know what I mean? Like, I do think there's right, still right. that gimmick that yeah. is propelling it where Mission Impossible does not have that great gimmick going, that great scam, right. as we say. Well, we'll see. It's a, it's going to be a fascinating weekend. I mean, like we said at the start, Blue Beetle is basically fighting for its life at the box office. Um, and then Shrays is going to be very interesting because it really is a situation where they may have screwed up something that would have been a hit in June and may bomb now, or it could surprise us all and do what we all hoped it would do and be a surprise comedy hit. It's I hope very I am wrong. I hope I'm 100%. wrong. hundred um, percent. And a little tease for the next episode. You know, things could change because this is one of the busiest men in show business, but we are currently scheduled to have Podcast Jesus, Kirk Minahan, return to talk about the results for Strays and uh, um, Blue Beetle for the next episode. So again, card subject to change, but right now, that is the plan. So very Weather exciting permitting. here. Weather permitting, of course. So um, before we give our plugs, David, again, where can all of the wannabe old boys, wannabe old girls, wannabe old people, people find your work? Yeah, you guys can find me at thedirect.com. I write there pretty much every day. The Direct Podcast, Apple, Spotify, all those good things personal accounts um it's at david thompson that's with two a's on twitter instagram and tiktok um yeah tiktok i have been updating that pretty regularly now so go uh hit me with a follow over there just check out my page for box office stuff a lot of the time movie stuff superhero stuff uh it's pretty much my shtick over there so yeah check it out and um subscribe to the pod Awesome. Thank you, David. And of course, well, listen, you'll be back here again and uh, can't wait to have you back. In the meantime, of course, everyone write us at the BL Boys Podcast at gmail.com. Love getting your emails, your boots on the ground reporting um, and follow us on the social medias. Oh, just quick email. Want to uh, give the prediction from this is from Danny over at I Screen You Scream for the number four the number movies. Four. And he is predicting, he says, Wow, this is a fiery quote from Danny. Mainstream audiences don't give. I'm gonna clean this up. Mainstream audiences yeah. don't give an F about Ooh. DC. My prediction, it makes under 20s as one of the worst DC opening weekends yet. Wow. So big, big statement from Danny over at I Screen You Scream for number four movies. And uh, yeah, send us your emails, the BO Boys Podcast at gmail.com. Follow us on the socials at the BO Boys Pod. Want to be our intern Christopher doing a great job with the vertical clips. And he may, may have an expanding internship staff. We're going to see soon. We may possibly have a, a, a live on uh, show interview with a prospective new intern soon. But for right now, want to be our intern Christopher doing it all by himself in the internship program. Of course, give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. We love getting those five-star reviews. And well, Pat, and with that said, since you mentioned our reviews and Christopher, we did, you know, we we're getting all these great reviews, so keep going. But we got a five-star review from Movie oh. Minifan who said, wannabe, wannabe oh, intern Chris doesn't seem as dumb as most interns. Great podcast, blah, blah, blah. So, 
in- intern Christopher getting a shout out by movie yeah. Minifan. Thank you so much for that. I mean, that is such a compliment because the perception of all interns is they are very dumb. Mm-hmm. So to have an intern that does not seem as dumb, that is high, high praise. So you've earned that want to be a winter and Christopher. Thank you for those five star reviews, everyone. And of course, watch us on YouTube. We are YouTubers. So find the VO boys there. Watch, like, subscribe. And what else should they do, Clayton? Ring that bell. Yeah, you got to ring that bell. And so, guys, I think that's it. I think we've done it. What an excellent job by all of us. Yeah, I don't think there's anything left to say. No, nothing. Except for until next time. We'll smell you at the box office. Nailed it.